Hello, everyone. Hey, everybody. Happy Independence Day. Yes, happy 4th of July. Happy 4th of July to you all, and welcome to an episode of Massey Art Studios. I'm Lee. And I'm Jeremy. So I did a red, white, and blue inspired pour when I became a citizen about a month or two yeah. ago. Mm -hmm. So um, we're not doing a red, white, and blue pour today. Yes. However, there is a pour aid like a parade, but a parade that's happening. <laughs> and you've got Mina, you've got Sarah, you've got Kathleen from Cos Creations, yeah. and some other wonderful artists. They will be premiering back to back to back to back episodes. Yeah. Um, so please do go follow those. I'll put a link to at least the very first episode in the description box, so you'll be able to go and kind of link and watch. Yes. So we were thinking about what we wanted to do today. And we get a lot of questions yes. in the comments box and also when we're premiering, premiering around the use of the flow extender. Because we mm. talk about flow extenders. We talk about them a lot. In fact, we talked about it in our recipe video, but didn't really show you the consistency of the flow extender. Yeah. And this episode is going to be about the flow and the flow. why it's important <laughs> and the difference you get when you do use a flow extender and when you don't use a flow extender. Yes. Um, so hopefully this is a really interesting episode because it was certainly really fun for us to film it and you can very easily see the difference between using the flow extender and not using the flow extender. Oh, absolutely. So we're going to do two ring pours on the same size canvas using the same colors. I'm not going to use a flow. And I am going to use the flow extender. There uh, you go. So I guess you can now see what's going to happen. But we'll tell you a little bit more about it when we get to the yes. table. Yes. Again, everyone, have a great weekend. Be safe. Be responsible. Have a great time. And celebrate the independence. Um, but in the meantime, we're going to get to the table and start pouring. Yes. Follow us over there. All right, ladles and jelly spoons. It's Lee at the table. So you just heard a little bit about what this episode is going to be about, but let me kind of give you some more info. So in the chat, whenever we do our premieres, people always say to us, why do you add a flow extender? Like, what's the point of it? And we talk about the reasons for it, but in this episode, we're actually going to show you the reasons for it. So I'm going to do a ring pour and not put a flow extender down on my canvas. Jeremy is going to do a ring pour and he is going to put a flow extender down. <laughs> and then hopefully what you'll be able to see as we do some close-up shots is the differences between the two. Um, we'll talk a bit more about that when we get to it. Yes. Um, this is an 11 by 14 inch canvas. Now what have I done to this? First off, I sprayed the back of it with a little bit of water. These canvases were a little loose when we got them, but now can hear that it's like a drum so it's nice and tight which means that you know I'm not gonna have a puddle in the middle of all my paints I've backed it with some tape and then I've got these giant push pins in the back here which you can find in our description box what that does is it just keeps the edges of the canvas up off the table so I can get a really beautiful kind of design all the way around the canvas. Yeah, nice finish. A nice finish indeed. Now Jeremy has exactly the same. And we're gonna use the same colors in this episode. Let me tell you what they are. Um, first off, we have Brilliant Blue by Liquitex Basics, which Ooh. is a really beautiful, bright blue. And then as a contrast to that, we've got the Pearl Glacier Blue by Arteza. Which we could have used, love. you do love this one. We could have used Pearl Electric, but I decided to go with Pearl Glacier. Um, then we've got Aqua Marine, sorry, Ultra Marine, and this is the red shade. This is a heavy body paint by Master's Touch. When I say heavy body, I was like squeezing this thing out of this tube. It came out almost like plastic. It was really, really thick for some reason. Um, I've also then got the uh, Master's Touch thick body acrylic and this is a turquoise deep which is a really pretty color and then we've got some pearl white by Arteza we use the goldens a lot but this time yeah. we're going to use the Artezas I've got quinacridone burnt orange by golden because I really wanted some like red and pink mm. pops in there so for the pink pops I've added the ultramarine no the pink tourmaline and this is an extreme sheen deco art color now to that, I have added a bit of copper. So it's just to take it a little out of the pink shade and it's now just a little bit more oh, of a coppery pink. Did. It's beautiful. It is, exactly. Thank you for that. 
Now let me show you our consistency here because we talk about this a lot. And if you check out episode number 54, you'll see exactly what this is. This is 50% Floetrol, it's 25% Liquitex Gloss Medium, and it's 25% paint. Now the Liquitex Gloss Medium, we buy in the big old buckets and then we decant it into old creamer bottles just because it's really easy then to pour with. And what that means is that in this eight ounce mix right here, I've only got two ounces of paint. Yes. Because I've got two ounces of Gloss Medium and, and four ounces of Floetrol. So it just helps your paints go a long, long way. And what you'll see here is, this is the um, Pearl Glacier Blue, which is all normally a little bit more of a runnier paint, but this one is mounding and then disappearing within one or two seconds. So this is the perfect consistency for a ring pour. Now my only caveat to a mix is that these Masters Touch thick body paints, this is the turquoise and this is the ultramarine, they needed a splash of water to get them all the same consistency. So I just wanted everything to be this consistency. This was my benchmark then for all things going forward. So um, with any pour, really, it's really important that all of your paints are the same consistency. Otherwise, you'll find that they'll slip and slide in different speeds along your canvas and that'll really mess up your composition. Yeah. Now let's get layering this cup. So the plan here with this ring pour is this. I'm gonna alternate these colors light and dark. Now it doesn't mean that I have to do light blue, dark blue. I could yeah. mix these up. Mm. And I've clearly got pearls and a pink tourmaline here as well, right. which I'm considering a light color. Um, but the plan is to go light and dark because that'll help me create some really beautiful rings. So um, let's do this. I'm gonna start off with some of the turquoise deep. Now, what I put in the cup at the beginning means it's gonna come out at the very, very end. So my first layers are gonna be really small. These are not gonna be thick layers at all. Now, why is that? Why is what? Why are you doing thin layers? For the reason I just said. Oh. So these, these colors are going to be the colors that are gonna come out of the cup at the very, very end. So I don't want real thick ribbons of color, otherwise I'm not gonna get any contrast in that final kind of ring. So I'm doing slightly smaller, thinner layers of paint at this point. However, as I start to get up the cup, I'll go thicker and thicker. That makes sense. Absolutely. Thank you for re-explaining that no, to course, me. Of course, of course, of course. Okay. So now I'm going to put a thicker layer of turquoise in. So hopefully you could see the difference in the amount of color I put in there. Now my separation layer, these lighter pearls, I'm still not putting a lot of in this cup because I really just want them to help me separate the layers. Here's my first little tip of pink tourmaline. Now that one really takes over. I love it. So I'm gonna go really carefully with it. Now I'd say the only paint that looks a little thicker than some of the others is this, is this quinacridone. I know. Um, but I've thinned it down so very much. I'm gonna put a little bit more of this in here. Getting daring. Look at you. I know. Living life on the edge. I know. Dangerously is my middle name. Dangerously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> get it? Yep. Dangerously. You get it. I get got it. it. I got it. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at you. There we go. That is my cup. That's a beautiful Lied. cup. Thank you, sir. Okay, now let's ring pour these onto this canvas. Are you ready? I am ready. Is everyone at home ready? Yes, I heard that. Okay, let's do this. So I'm gonna go right in the middle of the canvas. Mm -hmm. Right here.
Okay, that's a lot of blue on this bad boy. And there was a huge big blob of yeah. ultramarine that came out as I, was, as I was pouring this one, which I was very conscious of. All right, so now what I would normally do is add a flow extender, but for the purposes of this exercise, we're not. I am gonna torch this one off though. All right, so now I'm torched. As I said, what I would normally do is, is pour a flow extender on here, but we're not gonna do that today. Instead, what I'm gonna do is just tilt this one out with a dry canvas. And I'm hoping what you're gonna be able to see here is those colors rolling over each other, and I'm gonna lose them in the tilt. So um, let's see what happens. It is, in fact, no flow extender tilting time. Let's tilting do this. Time. So there you have it. Do I hate this? Absolutely not. I actually really love the piece. It's very blue, um, beautiful rings, beautiful lines. I've got some cells peeking through, but there are some challenges here. First thing, 
because there's no flow extender, I wasn't able to like continue to manipulate the composition. I got this ring that's now at the bottom here and there's no more paint for me to tilt this one off anymore. So this is really how this one is gonna have to stay. Um, you know, normally when I do a ring pour, I would try and keep the ring somewhat central if that's what I was going for. It's not possible here. The other thing to mention is because there's no flow extender, my corners are really exposed. So now I'm definitely gonna have to take my popsicle stick and try and just tidy up these corners. Whereas if I had a flow extender, you know, that might've been covered up as well. So is it 100% necessary to add a flow extender? We will see because Jeremy is up next and he's gonna do exactly the same pour using exactly the same colors, but is gonna use a flow, ex flow extender. Yeah, <sighs> Jeremy. So I'm gonna get my corners and my edges. I'm gonna to touch this off one more time and then I'm gonna take you guys in for a close up. Thank you everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Jeremy here, and I am excited about this to show you what exactly is going on with my ring pour today <laughs> um, and how we're using a flow extender is going to show you that it, with Lee's, you saw how it rolled over, like all the lines kept rolling over and you lost a lot of that composition. Well, with mine, you're gonna see how the, the flow extender will allow those, allow the paint to just smooth out. Um, without losing a lot of those lines. We hope. We hope. <laughs> we hope. Because that's how it's supposed to be. I'm sure it will. So, um, now you got me all nervous. No. no. Uh, so, why don't I go ahead and show you my uh, flow extender. And what that is, it's this 24 karat Deco Art Americana uh, Gold. And as you can see, whenever I do like this it does the mound upon a mound now this is the same consistency as the other paints right now yes, it is. um i wanted to add some water to it to show you guys the difference between this the mound on mound to the flow extender consistency excellent so just to say that again so everyone at home is maybe not confused okay currently it's mixed to 50 percent flow troll 25 percent paint 25 percent gloss medium just yes. like all the colors yes but as we're not using it in your cup and we are going to use it as a flow extender yeah we're not using it as one of my rings we're not you are now going to water this one out yes and and so why are you adding water jeremy what's the reason um, it's to thin it out so that way it can be used as a flow extender. Okay. And listen, it's not necessary for you to use gold as a flow extender. Exactly. You could have used one of your colors. White. You can use any Anything color, at honestly. All. But with gold, what you're probably going to do is create some gold cells. cells. Yes. yes. Exciting. Okay. So you thin this one out. Yes. Now, is there a science here? Are you just doing it by splosh by splosh? I'm doing it splosh by splosh. Okay. Splosh away. I'm gonna do a nice healthy pour Spock. there. Yeah, that was a nice healthy pour. That was like at least a good tablespoon, if not more. So is it fair to say that the kind of consistency you're going for in your flow extender is similar to the thin consistency that we pour in episode number 54, which is kind of the consistency you would use for like Dutch pours and maybe even your leaves. Exactly, pour. Yeah? exactly. It is definitely a thin consistency. There will be no mounding. This paint will probably just disappear as you pour it onto itself, right? Yeah, and I put probably another half a teaspoon, a little bit more than half a teaspoon of, of water in there, and it's still not thin enough. Okay. It's kind of doing a disappearing mound, what we call a disappearing mound. Right, so um, another splosh. Yeah, another splosh. So okay. another half a teaspoon. Now, everyone always says, you know, what, how much should I use? What percentage? How many cups? How many teaspoons? How many whatever? 
It's so hard to tell because there are different consistencies of paints. There are. Metallics are different than, than all the other acrylics because they usually are a little thinner. You really have to just go for the feel of the paint. But what you're looking for here, as Jeremy said, is a paint that just doesn't mound. It just falls into itself and then completely disappears. Yeah. Another half a tablespoon there? Another half a, ta no, another half a teaspoon. Okay. No. Uh, yeah. Teaspoon. Okay. That's looking pretty spot on by by my eye. How is it feeling? Yeah, it's it's there. Okay. Yeah. So it just it, what happens is that whenever you pour this into here, it just kind of disappears automatically. Right. And you know, people hate the food analogies, but it's the easiest way to use an analogy that you all understand because we all, yeah. you know, we all know what cream feels like yeah well it's kind of like a, a cream right it is a it is a very creamy consistency right. awesome yes okay so now you're going to lay your cup i am going to layer my cup right now we thought about this and we wondered whether we had to do it identical but we don't because that's not the exercise here so you can layer this cup however you see fit. So I'm really excited about layering my cup with these colors they're beautiful colors right they're very beautiful colors okay you go yeah. for it I gotcha. Okay, perfect. I am gonna start with, I believe, pink tourmaline. Because this is gonna be the last color out of the cup. So this is gonna be what's gonna be in the very center of my pour. Okay guys, so I just layered my cup and now I'm going to use my 24 karat gold Deco Art Americana um, as my flow extender here. So I'm going to pour a puddle here. Lovely. Yes. Okay, I got my cup here. We're going to go ahead and start my ring pour. problem with my rings. There we go. Hmm. Having a problem with my rings again. That wasn't a great dismount there, but um, move it back this way a little bit. Okay. Yeah, so I'm really interested to see what's gonna happen with this. So now you're gonna put your flow extender down and yes. then we're gonna torch this one off. Okay. Okay guys, so I got my flow extender down. I, I went ahead and I torched it. Um, so it is ready to go. I'm going to stretch this out. I'm gonna to come to this corner first, bring it back up and then go back to that corner there. So it is with flow extender tilting time. <laughs> it is tilting time. Now you can pick this one up. Don't worry about it. No. 
and see how the colors aren't rolling over one another. Okay guys, so as you saw, like I really kept the composition of the rings on the canvas. They didn't roll over each other. We didn't lose any of that. Um, and the gold uh, flow extender, it is, I wish I, I wish I could turn it sideways because the gold is like celled up unbelievable all around the edges here. And it's starting to sell up like all through here, like I'm getting gold cells, like all through here now. I think in 15 minutes, this will be a very different piece. It will, piece. it definitely will. So what we're gonna have to do is, um, I'll get my edges, we'll take you in for a close up so you can actually see some of that gold cells popping up. Um, and then we're gonna have to like maybe show dry results of this whenever it's the, whenever they're dry so yeah. that you can see. You won't be able to see it unfortunately in today's episode because we're a yeah. little late pouring, yeah. but we'll definitely show this one in Tuesdays or Fridays. Yes, Absolutely. exactly. Yeah, so that way you can see the difference in the, the, how the rings, how they rolled over one another and stuff with it dry. Um, but anyway, let me go ahead and get my edges and take you in for a close up. Lovely, thank you guys. So there you have it, folks. There you have it. What did you think of the <laughs> experiment? We were experimenting in the studio today. So um, I think it was really clear. Very, and absolutely. And very obvious the difference between using the flow extender and not. Absolutely. So um, let me say this. In my pour, 
when I didn't use the flow extender, what was really obvious to see was that those colors were rolling over the top mm -hmm. of each other as I was tilting out my canvas. Now that's not necessarily a problem. Um, it's not wrong, but what it will mean is that I've taken all that time to get those beautiful rings and layers on the canvas. And then as I tilt this one out, I'm going to lose them all. Yeah. The other thing about not having a flow extender on this canvas was that my corners and my edges were really hard to get covered because I've got no paint flowing over the sides either. So yeah. that was my kind of observation of not using a flow extender. Yes. What about you? Well, obviously using a flow extender allows your, the, the, the paint to just smoothly flow over the canvas. Um, right. You don't lose a lot of those lines. You don't lose a lot of your composition. Mm -hmm. um, it's easier to go over the corners and the edges. Uh, it was just, yeah, I feel that using a flow extender actually really helps out the composition of the, of the painting. Now, is it 100% necessary? The answer is no. no. It is not. And there are some techniques that you probably won't put a flow extender yeah. down. Um, yeah. Especially if you've got a lot of paint on the canvas and you really like just want to just cover the canvas without using a flow. Yeah. If you are going to use a flow extender, think about the reasons why you're using it. If you're going to keep some negative space, then your flow extender wants to be a color that's complementary to your composition. Exactly. Um, if you want to create some really wonderful cells like the show pony did, then you might want to use a gold underneath because that's going to keep popping up as it dries. Yes. So the flow extender is one of those things that you really still do need to be conscious of and to consider in your composition. Absolutely. But this was really fun. It was. Um, we will show you the wet results again as we've been talking through this little outro. Um, and in an upcoming episode, we'll show you those dried pieces too. Because yes. as you'll see, the Yerimi's had a lot of gold cells pop up on it. Yeah. So it was a lot of fun. All right, people. One last time. Happy Independence Day. Happy 4th of July. We hope you have a great weekend and everyone celebrates and has some fun. Absolutely. Um, we've got some fun things coming up. Um, we've got our normal Tuesdays and Fridays episode. But then on the weekend, we've got the all-male review. <laughs> what is that? Well, you'll find out a little bit more information about it. Um, it is fully clothed, um, but we've got a collaboration coming up with some wonderful men. Some men in the pouring world. Yes. We're going to do a collaboration with some guys and um, yeah, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Some, probably some new faces that you haven't even seen before quite too. Possibly. Yeah. yeah, quite possibly. So yeah, it's going to be awesome. So please join us for that. More information to follow. Um, and and then I have my birthday pour. Yeah. You just had yours, I had mine, uh -huh. and I've got something a little special planned for that one. So we'll see. Huh. Again, more information. I don't even know what he has planned for this, so this is going to be very interesting. What you do, you've just forgotten. Oh. Um, it involves the garage and uh, maybe something swinging from the ceiling. Oh, that's right. Mm. Okay, here we go. Now I remember. Now, you now remember. I remember. There you go. Okay, <laughs> enough said. All right, lovelies. Um, please like and subscribe. Please have a great weekend. We will see you back here on Tuesday for yes. another episode. All right, guys, have a great weekend. Bye, guys. See you soon. We want to take a moment to spank. Spank. <laughs> Spank some very special people. <laughs> Larry. We want to take a moment to thank some very special people. Absolutely. And that's our Patreons. Patreons. So the Patreon account is a very separate account from YouTube, mm -hmm. but it allows some very important people the opportunity to get a little bit of a closer look of the studio. And there are certain levels. So at one level, for example, you get to see sneak peeks and behind the scenes videos. Mm -hmm. At another level, you're invited to join us in a WhatsApp group where we chat, we exchange pictures, and you also get weekly painting challenges. In another level, you get um, once a month live streams. At another level, you get once a month tutorials that are live. Yes. And then at our top tier, the diamond level, you would get to pick the colors and the technique for an episode of Massey Art Studios. Mm -hmm. And then you get to keep one of the 11 by 14 inch canvases every single month. So there are some people that we would very much like to thank, and that's our Massey Posse. Or yes. the MPs, as we like to call them. So at the gold level, we've got Mary Doulas, 
We've got Amy Gardner, aka Crafty Chicken Mom. Crafty Chicken Mom. We've got Linda Serian. We have Nate Bright. Gloria Salaki, who we like to call Glitzy. We've got Terry Leshner. We've got Donna Patterson. Stephanie Hancock and Trisha West. Now, at the platinum level, we have Donna Panis, we have Janice and Steve Pittman, and we have Leslie Beaver. And at our diamond level, our one and only, you all know her, you will all love her, we do too, <laughs> it is Sparkles. Sparkles. Laurie Finzer is our diamond pourer. So to all you guys and everyone else that's listed down below, thank you so very much. We really do genuinely appreciate you wanting to be a Patreon and a Massey Pora. And uh, yeah, we look forward to sharing more of this journey with you all. Thank you guys. Thanks guys.